Hi and welcome to Profex Tutorials. Even though Profex includes more than 800 structure files, it does not always contain all the ones we need. In this episode I'm going to show how we can download files from Crystal Structure databases and how they can be converted to the BGMN structure file format. There are a number of free and commercial databases for Crystal Structure information and one of the free and most popular ones is the COD, which we can see on the screen. We can search the database for mineral names, for example. I will just download a few structure files for importing Profex. And we can, for example, start with Calcite. And we get uh, 138 matches. So we can just pick one. Um, preferably measured at room temperature, no high temperature phases. So let's maybe take this one here. It says in the title that it was measured at room temperature. So we can download the CIF file. And this is a format supported by Profex for uh, structure file import. Maybe let's search for Dolomite. And maybe take this file. It's very old. It's from 1959. But let's just take this one. Another popular database is uh, from the American Mineralogist Journal. We can also get C files from here. Uh, let's search for Aragonite and maybe let's just pick the first one. We can download the CIF data. So, and now um, let's just put them in a folder. So we have three files. And now we can go to Profex and import the files using File, Import Structure Files, which will open a dialog. It's still empty. Let's increase the size. And to open the, the CIF files, uh, we just add, click the plus button. And we have to make sure that the CIF format is selected in the format box. So we go here and we can open the three files we just downloaded all at once. So the first one was Dolomite. It uh, was automatically verified, which means that uh, it was converted to the BGMN structure file format from the source file. We can still view the source file the CIF, in CIF format here. That's exactly what we downloaded. And this is the converted file. And then it ran a verification. So it, it ran BGMN in the background to calculate the line positions. And if this is shown down here, if we see the line positions and also the calculated density, verification was successful. So this file was converted to BGMN structure file format automatically. Here we also see no asterisks in front of the file name. So this means this file was verified successfully. The other two files still have the asterisks. So it's not they were not uh, verified yet. But as soon as we click on them, it will run verification. And if everything goes well, we will see the stick pattern here, and also the density, and uh, it will be flagged as verified. And let's try the third one. Also here, Aragonite, we will see this the density and the stick pattern. So all files were converted to the structure file format automatically. We, have, we don't have to do anything. And we can immediately save them either individually, one by one, and giving them a name. Or we can choose save all files as structure files, but then it will use the same name as here, so we cannot give mineral names. It will just choose the database record uh, name as a file name. So if we do this, 
it will warn us that only verified structure files will be saved. So if there were still files uh, that either failed verification or we just forgot to verify yet, these will be skipped. So only if verification was successful, they will be saved. So we click OK. We can select the path, where the directory where to save them and click op Open. And now it will tell us that all three files were saved at this position. If we close the dialog, uh, it will run uh, indexing of these files, so now they should be available in in a, all of our new project. So we can actually see them here right at the beginning because they start with uh, numbers instead of letters. So this is uh, ideally what happens. Uh, we only have to load the files, run verification, and then save the files to the repositories. Unfortunately, this is not always working because uh, C files are not always complete. Sometimes they are lacking some information that is required by BGMN. And I have one example here, so we can close these. It's for clinoptilolite, um, a zeolite mineral. And let's just open this one. And now we get a warning. Um, it says the following space group was found in the source file, but we have to select the correct setting. So there is no international tables number for the space group, but it found the Hermann Mogan symbol, C1, 2 over M1, and the uh, cell parameters. But obviously in BGMN, there are two different space group settings that both uh, match this symbol. Uh, it's space group number 12 that was detected automatically even though it was not specified in the C file. And then we have two settings, setting number 1 and setting number 8. And now we have to decide which one is the correct one. And the problem with this C file is that it does not contain Wyckoff symbols for the atomic positions. Um, I will cancel this and let me show you in Tools, Browse BGMN Space Groups. We can have a look at all the space groups known by BGMN. So we were in number 12. And in the next column, we have the different settings. And we have to decide between setting number 1 and setting number 8, which is this one. So they both have the same Hermann Mogan symbol. But apparently there is a difference in the Wyckoff uh, symmetries. So on position Wyckoff position A, they are both in the origin, so there is no difference. On B, no difference. On C, yes, here we can see a difference. So in one setting, the ones with Wyckoff symmetry C are expected to be at 0, 0, 0.5. And in the other setting, they are expected to be at 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0.5. So now we have to figure out which one is the correct setting by going through the list of atoms and check if we have atoms at this position or at this position, or maybe the same for D and so on. So here it's in the center of the unit cell. Here it's at zero, so it's face centered. So this is a rather tedious process, but it's necessary because um, Profex cannot automatically identify the setting because the Wyckoff symbols are missing. If they were present in the C file, Profex would be able to do this comparison by itself and it would be able to find the correct setting. The correct one is setting number one. I know that because uh, we will see it later on. And now the import was successful. However, if we look at the um, calculated density, it is very high. It is more than four grams per centimeter cubed. So for a zeolite, this is, this is way too high. So there is still a problem with this file. And if we go to the source file, that's the C file downloaded from the database again, 
we scroll down to the list of atoms and we can see five positions that are named with water and and the number so water molecules in the structure in the channels of the zeolite are named as water and it, there is no information about the um, about the element of course um, these are usually refined as oxygens they are just labeled water to indicate that it's not a framework oxygen but it's a, it's an oxygen which is part of a of a volatile water molecule so that's it. this is how the the authors of this structure distinguish between framework oxygens and water oxygens but what profex does now is it doesn't know this symbol so it tries to determine the element from this uh, text here and it only finds the w letter and it does not know how to interpret the rest of of the string so it assumes that it is uh, tungsten which has the element letter w which of course is is wrong so in this case um, the auto detection of the element went wrong and what we have to do is change it back to ox oxygen like so and now we have to run the verification of this updated structure again so we can play uh, press the play button here run again and now the calculated structural density makes a lot more sense for a zeolite it's a bit more than two and also the, the stick pattern the hkl plot changed quite a bit so now this uh, should be the correct structure and we can just save it as we did before and this time i will give it a name and if we close it should be indexing this file and uh, that's all we have to do if you have access to a commercial database like the pdf4 from the icdd the international center for diffraction data this is a very good source for structure information however you need the version 4 the pdf4 database because the, the cheaper pdf2 database does not contain structural information it only contains uh, diffraction lines this is the front end for the pdf4 database so now we can search for this file um, maybe first search for the mineral uh, clinoptilolite and we are only interested in data sets measured at ambient conditions so let's check this and for read file refinement we need atomic coordinates we can only use uh, structure files with atomic coordinates so let's check this and ignore all other files without coordinates so yeah let's start the search it found 37 records for clinoptilolite with structural data and the one i'm looking for was published by smith let's double click it's got potassium sodium calcium um, we can compare the unit cell dimensions um, here if it's the same as in the sif file and it must be the same data set so a b and c a b and c are identical the angle beta as well so this is the data set i'm looking for it has uh, structural information so if we go to the structure page we see the coordinates but uh, it does not have uh, any isotropic or anisotropic displacement parameters which is interesting because the sif file actually has anisotropic u factors so why are they not in this uh, pdf4 record well if we go to the comments page there's a warning reported displacement parameters on non-h atoms are outside the range uh, 0 0.001 to 0 0.1 so obviously the editor of the pdf4 database decided that these values are not trustworthy and omitted them 
But anyway, we can use this database record and try to import it in Profex. So we have to export it. And then we can choose between three different file formats. Again, the SIF format, which we already have, but from a different database. And there is a specific format for Bruker Topaz files. It also uses the extension STR, just as Profex, but it's not the same format, so we cannot use this format. And there is this, the XML format specific for the uh, ICDD PDF4 database. And whenever we can use this XML format, we should use it because it's usually more complete than the SIF format. So I select this and I will export it to my documents folder. And now if I go to this folder, it created three files. Um, an XML file, this is the one we need. A JPEG file, which is just a preview of the diffraction pattern from the database. And some additional file we, we don't need. So this XML file is what we need for Profex. And we will now try to import it in Profex. Importing XML structure files from the PDF4 database works exactly the same as with SIF files. We go to File, Import Structure File, then we click the plus button. And this time we have to change the format from SIF to ICDD XML files. Now we see the one we just exported from the database. We click Open. And even though it's exactly the same database record, so it's it's the, the same published structure as the Kleinoptilodite structure from before. This time we do not get an error message. And if we go to the source file, we see a different structure format. It's an XML file again. But this one now contains the Wyckoff symbols for all atomic positions. So this letter here. And now Profex is able to determine the correct setting setting number one. So we don't have to select it manually as before. And the density is a bit more than two. So also here, the water molecules are now labeled with the oxygen symbol. So this time the import was uh, completely automatic. When we close, now we have to save first. Let's call it um, Kind of telolite PDF4. And when we close, this one will be indexed as well. And if we open a structure file and we search for Kleinoptilolite, we can find the one from the PDF4 and the one from the COD database. If we switch back and forth between the two uh, reference structures, we can see differences in the HKL line pattern. So obviously the two database records are not exactly identical. And if we look at them at the structure files side by side, we can in fact see that the site occupancies are different. So this is the one we got from the uh, COD database. And this is the one from the PDF4 database. And also what we observed before, the COD uh, and record contains uh, thermal displacement parameters. The PDF4 one does not. So they are not perfectly identical. Anyway, this is how we import structure files either in C format or in ICDD PDF4 XML format in Profex and convert them to the BGMN structure file format. I hope you like this episode. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.